There's just something about the sound. The speed. Oh, that is fast. And of course, the savagery. Had a shot and this time he does deliver. Oh, nifty. That is disgusting. And look where the bombs drop now as well. It's the most iconic gun in Counter-Strike and the only specific weapon in all of esports to have a position named after it. The AWP is a feared and respected weapon in Counter-Strike. Its mere existence changes how players navigate the map. In a game where spray patterns mean so much, and movement is the death of marksmanship. There's one! Stewie, can he do it? Can he do it? No! Stop by Kerrigan! Faye, stay in this! It almost feels unfair that there exists something as simple, straightforward, and sublime as the AWP. To think that you can not be looking and just do this and kill two guys is like, what the hell, man? It's like, it shouldn't, it shouldn't be fair. The AWP isn't just a sniper rifle. It's a living, breathing art form, a brush that gamers have been using to paint beautiful, bloody portraits for nearly two decades. It's known love. Oh, Guardian, he gets two. There's still more to go, though. Cowboy must pop the bomb. The peaks come in, but Guardian will not stop. One more to go, and Guardian gets them! Hate. Right the very start, but Oscar! Oh no! He misses a sit of that! And everything in between. There, there was a lot of things that I was doing uh, that I couldn't do anymore. So I had to find new stuff. I had to, to play a, a bit different. In fact, it's because of its tumultuous history that the AWP remains one of the most infamous and influential instruments of digital death ever created. This is its story. The Arctic Warfare Police, also known as the AWP or AWP, like its real-world counterpart, is a high-powered, bolt-action rifle equipped with a long-range scope. And while it's made appearances in a variety of shooters, it's most famous for playing an integral role in Counter-Strike. To this day, the AWP remains the definition of high-risk, high-reward. It offers tremendous damage output, incredible armor penetration, and perfect hit-scan precision. The trade-off is that it's slow to operate, difficult to handle in close quarters, and most importantly, needs to be manually reloaded after every single shot. It's also one of the most expensive weapons in Counter-Strike, and it's usually in a team's best economic interest to run only one at a time. But that hasn't stopped it from becoming both a fan favorite and a meta staple in every iteration of Counter-Strike. Well, I mean, imagine CS without the AWP, right? I feel like some players would be really bad, and some players would be like way better than they are. Like imagine FaZe Nico, if he the only thing that kills him is an AWP. That guy doesn't lose an aim jewel, man, so. The reason for this is simple. It's the only weapon in the game that can kill an enemy with a single shot to the head or torso, regardless of whether they're wearing armor. Because of this, the AWP is a weapon where, in terms of raw mechanical skill, the floor is actually quite low. You literally have to just right click and then move your hand a tiny bit and left click and you'll kill people. Like if you're aiming in the right place, you'll kill people, you know? Uh, anyone can AWP, anybody can AWP, like it's really easy. But the ceiling is unbelievably high. I think to, to be a real great AWPer, you have to master it. You have to know everything about it, like how to quick scope, how to, like your movement uh, also have to be pretty smooth. Whereas most of Counter-Strike's weapons are hindered by player movement, susceptible to crosshair expansion, and shoot along specially designed spray patterns, the AWP offers a way to circumvent all of that. To shoot someone one time, from nearly anywhere, through nearly anything, and remove them from the round in the blink of an eye, can be a make or break moment. They can't do anything more to like nerf it, you know, because the gun's broken, like it is, it's bullshit, like fully, fully bullshit. To think that you can not be looking and just do this, and kill two guys is like, what the hell, man? It's like, it shouldn't, it shouldn't be fair. But like, like you said, it has to be in the game because every game has one. Um, yeah, it's just, it's very, very broken and anyone can use it. So that's like the most annoying part. Like he can die to the worst player and you're like, he has an AWP, like it doesn't matter. <laughs> but like if you die to an AK, you're like, he probably out aimed me. So yeah, it's, it could be annoying sometimes. This means that nothing not cover, not spastic movement, not even protective plates can provide sanctuary from that weapon's wrath. 
The AWP is like the boogeyman of Counter-Strike. In addition to being the most powerful weapon, it's the one whose presence inspires the most fear. On sent qu'il est pas souvent avec euh, avec cette arme, il est pas à l'aise. Autant le mettre euh, au rifle. Oh, oh Bandy oh, oh, oh. Dégueulasse sur device Le wall shot From a strategic standpoint, the AWP is one of the objects around which nearly the entirety of Counter-Strike revolves. It closes off bomb sites, shuts down sight lines, and forces enemy teams into something of an ultimatum. Avoid it like the plague, or counter it at all costs. MSL! How is he maneuvering with balls in his mid? Oh, oh, okay. Unbelievable by MSL! If you look at us, for example, I like to buy it a lot, but we also have set strategies where you don't need an AWP. And the AWP also has certain limitations, right? You're slower with the movement speed, it's harder to enter a bump side with it. Um, and a lot of our strategies also revolves around can the opponents have an AWP? You ask the question, how important is it to know those kind of things? And the economy plays a huge part in, in what things you can do. Can you run uh, specific areas without smoking, it, uh, smoking them? Or do you have to use a lot of utility to get there? I think the AWP is very instrumental for, for Counter-Strike. Most importantly, the AWP's incredible strength stems from the fact that it is, in essence, a point-and-click deletion tool. So players started thinking, if the AWP is this good, why restrict it to long-range use? Why not use it all the time? Good call. And it's dissolving as well. Flash dodges, nails it. Hits Bronex. He wrapped over to his left. Second shot from Kenny. They're not going fast enough. Wrapped through that second door. Put pressure on. He goes oh. to a pistol and gets two. It was from this realization, this innovation, that opping and the culture thereof was born. From wall bangs. But he will have another crack at a shot. And this time he does deliver. Oh, nifty. That is disgusting. And look where the bombs drop now as well. To quick scopes. Kenny almost, oh, what? To no scopes. Mopping quickly established itself as the sexiest, most stylish, and most skillful way to dispose of one's enemies, as well as the most sublime. And like all warrioristic ways, it wasn't long before it attracted a loyal constituency, devotees who were known both then and now as oppers. When I feel, when I feel the op power, or how to say, that that's when I want to buy it. But now people tell me to buy it a bit more because they actually think I am good with it, and that I, yeah, get a lot of map control and all that stuff. On the one hand, opper is a positional term. It refers to the player on a team who's been entrusted to handle something as singular and skill-intensive as the op. But it's also a term of art a title that players identify with at almost a spiritual level. Running the AWP is a big responsibility, and it's pretty standard for teams to bestow it upon someone who isn't just good with it, but has devoted every waking second of their life to mastering it. So yeah, what I do basically, it's uh, uh, 200 kills AWP each day. Uh, also 100 kill AK and uh, 50 M4. Uh. It's fair to say that no two oppers are exactly alike, and that each one has contributed to the advancement of the craft in their own special way. But, as with all crafts, opping wouldn't be what it is today without its giants, those practitioners who didn't advance it as much as they revolutionized it. In 1.6, the most iconic of such players was Igor Markolov Markolov, a Ukrainian legend who helped pioneer a playstyle that, in addition to placing a heavy emphasis on entry fragging, was known for being highly aggressive. The next generation of noteworthy oppers was spearheaded by a group of 1.6 and Source players who would go on to have even more illustrious careers in CSGO. Jesper J.W. Vexel, Gabriel Fallen Toledo, Ladislav Guardian Kovacs, and perhaps the single most famous opera of all time, Kenny, Kenny S. Shrub. But once again, this is the most important position pretty much on the A site. PNX not going to give it up without a fight, and it's going to come down to Kenny S with the AWP. 1v3, we can see where he's looking now. Just gets the shot barely on MSL. Finds the second one. Kenny S oh. blank with the no scope. Despite having made a name for himself in Source, it was in CSGO where Kenny S became a full-fledged divinity. 
In addition to his all too famous flick shots, Kenny became renowned for his tendency to land pixel perfect peaks whilst moving in on already established defenders. It's gonna be the old battle again, JW versus Kenny, and Kenny comes out on top. JW was one pixel away with that shot, and look at Titan. He also demonstrated an inhuman ability to dominate in quarters that most operas would classify as too close for comfort. Off. In comes Kenny S. Oh my god, oh. Kenny S with three insane kills and he has time. Wait, are you telling me he's going to he, win the round? Has he got time? Yeah, he's got time. Unbelievable. By early 2015, the French Phenom had become renowned for having perfected a hyper-aggressive, in-your-face style of opping, the likes of which the world had never seen. He was someone who could play very close. He could move very quickly with the op. He could hit no scopes. He was constantly quick peeking and quick scoping. That movement mechanic was taken out quite significantly. In fact, it was due to Kenny's unique opping style and how influential it became that in March 2015, Valve did the unthinkable. They took the op, the crown jewel of Counter-Strike, and nerfed it. In the patch released on the 31st of March, the AWP, and auto snipers as well, but they're not particularly relevant in, in the competitive scene, but the, the AWP was nerfed in as much as movement while scoped was reduced. In what has since become recognized as one of the most controversial updates in CSGO history, Valve lowered the value of the AWP's scoped movement speed, making it so that attacking AWPers were at a significant disadvantage to defending ones. Here he comes once again. The first base is a trend. He's going to hit the ground there. It's cold. Oh, oh what? A jumping double from cold. What is there going on right now? How does he do this? Cold has saved Luminosity with the all play. Unthinkable scenes there on the B apartments. The fallout for Kenny, the community, and Counter Strike at large was horrific. The update essentially forced offers everywhere to relearn their weapon of choice and take an entirely new approach to angles that they've been practicing since 1.6 and Source. I got hit, like, even in my motivation. I was like, damn, why did it do that? that that's, that's so unfair for me because I actually felt like they, they did it for me. They did it because of me. That's not necessarily true, but that's how I felt. For better or for worse, Valve forced Oppers into an ultimatum. Adapt, and in turn evolve, or be superseded. 30 seconds to plant the bomb, he's gonna drop a smoke, he spots Dennis just for a moment. Oh, he hits the shot! The bomb is down on the train now! Fox has to go and collect that, and Neo is going to try to make this happen with his AWP. He's got the smoke there on his left, that is giving him a bit of extra space, and he finds the shot! Neo is gonna collect it for versus Pro! Kenny did eventually adapt, and it wasn't long before he was once again putting on the kinds of performances that we'd come to expect. Trying to dark, trying to find something through the smoke. Oh, he's gonna find Fox as well. He is not giving this one up. He's gonna push through the window indeed. He's coming through the smoke. Rain goes down as well. Only Makalele to find now. He will finally put an end to this madness. And yet, despite finally earning a major victory at Cluj Napoca in November 2015, he never managed to re-establish himself as the godly, untouchable opera he once was. I mean, of course, he, he was like the best uh, player individually, I guess. So, but the thing, the thing was that, including myself and probably many, many others as well, was that you started to you started to fear him, you know, because. You started to think that he is godlike or whatever, like you can't kill him. Like, I think that that's that was something that he took advantage of very, very much uh, at that time. Uh, and I think that is the biggest difference to now. Uh, people don't really sure he have been in a slump and all that, but the most uh, most important factor right now, I would say, is that people don't fear him the same way. To this day, many regard the change as having been unjustified given that there had only been a handful of competitors who were capable of carrying the gun to such absurd heights in the first place. Just draw and point right back. Well, it here. might be helpful if he played more than 20 hours in Kenny S and fault. his team started you know buying Don't, don't buying change the off, guys. Kinch, Kenny S. It's fucking his fault, isn't it? <laughs> At the time of its release, many feared that the update had nerfed the weapon beyond recognition and that it would mark the death of the op altogether. Needless to say, they were wrong. It's been four years since the infamous AWP nerf, and in that time, not a whole lot has changed. The AWP isn't what it used to be, but it's still the strongest weapon in CSGO. You just can't be as obscenely aggressive with it. Yeah, I think it's become less aggressive since the nerf back in the days. Um, 
back in the days you could peak into angles way more aggressively because you had a higher movement speed. Uh, so for sure the AWP has been a bit more passive these days. But still I feel like there's a lot of flexibility in how you want to play the AWP. And for the most part, people have regarded that as a good thing. Do you remember before they did the AVP update, can you explain yeah. this? Like, that was, that was too much. Yeah, one guy. Oh, that was, that was more than Kenny's. Like, all average AVPs could do the same thing, you know, not to the same extent as Kenny's could, but they were still good against good like you, could, you could abuse it, for sure. Whichever side you fall on, one thing is certain. The nerf made opping harder and forced existing oppers to become significantly more strategic in their approach. I think CSGO nowadays on the, the current meta we're playing, People are always challenging for information. Like, now, back in the days, you could trick players by throwing some nades there, and then you'd say, hey, now that they lost this part of the map, we can move forward with this thing. But with the way players are playing right now, being so aggressive in terms of collecting this info, you can really get tricked by thinking they don't have something, but actually they have it because they went to check it with a flash, or they just double picked it, or they just really took the risk to find what's going on there. And that changed the game a lot. So. You really have to be a little bit aggressive with the upper nowadays to kind of play on this meta where information is important every time. But it also gave birth to a new, more dynamic generation of oppers, players who were forced to work twice as hard as their predecessors in order to achieve the same result. Alping styles is, it can be annoying sometimes for me because I'm like normally, well I used to be like an aggressive upper, get in your face, but then I realized everyone was really smart at the top level and I just died all the time, so I stopped doing that. Um, so yeah, it's really hard for me now because I'm trying to find my style because I don't really have one. I'm kind of just doing what I'm told to do and that's it, which is like really frustrating for myself because I've always been the dominant one. The nerf sent opping into something of an existential crisis and for up and comers, this was somewhat terrifying. But it was also liberating. Since there was no longer a single accepted style that everyone was trying to imitate, the next generation of giants were free to create their own. I, in the beginning, I had kind of an identity crisis because Fallen and Kenny S were the hot thing at that point. They were the best players, but they were so fast-paced and close combat orbers, and I, that's not my style. So I remember looking at the best orbers and thinking, I'm not that type of orber. Um, and I had to create sort of my own style that would work for the team, but also for me. And, and that's where I, I kind of got the idea of the style that I'm playing right now. Nikolai Device Reeds is currently considered to be one of the best and most original offers in the world. And just find something weird that his cross can't handle. Another great pick for Device and another opening kill. And he's going to go for the follow up. He's blind. Magisk has got an aid kill. Again, the round is over, and why not? Continue challenging. You're on fire. Device shuts him down. Four kills in Banana. The reason for Device's sustained success isn't because he's aggressive, flashy, and unpredictable. On the contrary, he's developed a style of opping that's almost hyper defensive. Yeah, we have the one bloopers. now. Yeah, we've we've definitely got one. Device covering as Naf tries to retreat from the smoke. He's going to take that kill, following up on Twist and just completely decimating the incoming offense here for Team Liquid. Nitro and Taco, there's absolutely no way through. Oh my God, the flick is so quick. But it's precisely because he's so calculating, cautious, and risk averse that the Danish superstar is able to consistently outshine his opponents. That's kind of when they've fallen into a, a bit of a trap. And Astralis, they always have those backup plans. And they also have Device, the man, the myth, the beast, as he pops off bed, three kills, found four kills. Device wants the end of the Oh, Device has decimated them. He's also an opera who, unlike most of the weapon's greatest wielders, never wanted to op in the first place. Basically, ever since I remember, like I recall CS from when I was younger, I was always playing a rifle and I was kind of fast paced and so, so on. Then Danny joined us as a coach in the start of 2016, Sonic, and he basically did the same. At that point, we didn't have a, a, an operator, it was kind of fluent. Me, Cajun, and, and Kerrigan would switch it up between us, and he said, We need, a, we need an Ober. And he helped me a lot at that point. Like, compared me to Sonde, which is a 1.6 Danish legend. He was also a rifler and transitioned into a, being an all-time great opera. And I kind of went through the same thing. Device was, and in many ways still is, a rifler at heart. And it's because of this that he's managed to become an opera who dominates both on account of his passivity and his hybridity. If you look at a team like Astralis, they're probably the best in the world. And they only really use the sniper on the CT side. Device rarely buys it on the T side, maybe on one or two out of the seven maps. He like buys it consistently. Otherwise, uh, he only buys it if um, 
if another team is like pulling them. This is just a partial buy now for Navi. Saving himself about two grand. Oh, 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 Vince. He just out orb device at long range of a Deagle. Opposite device is the absurdly aggressive. They're right there, both of them in front of Simple creeping in. He's going to get one, the next shot, two in. Oh my god! Game breakingly accurate. Simple there with the AWP taking down Rain first. Next in line is Solof Meister. The flick is in. Oh my god, Simple! And altogether unrivaled Simple. See a double smoke's in the same place there. Simple just jumping casually into the side. He's going to fall down again. Oh! Why is this trap from Simple? Are you serious? What is that? You can't do that, Simple. That's not allowed. This is not FPL. This is a major. Arguably the single most talented player to ever live, Oleksandr Simple Kostilyev is a Ukrainian prodigy who took a post-nerf op and managed to replicate, if not supersede, Kenny S levels of aggression. Falls back after the first, he's alone. Slipshot Cavalier, he tries to peek it again, and he will, he absolutely will. Half human, half machine, looking straight through the lens. Simple finds around again, Navi. Simple doesn't do safe, smart, or sensible. He does the unthinkable. Down into a one-on-one, -on -one. good trades, but it's simple, and he's already here. Right outside, smoke gonna go off. Simple on the other side, he pulls out the pistol. He's got the P250, close range. It's a one-shot nitro. He's got a triple, he fakes it once and just goes to check the window. This is all about timing. Nitro does have a model of another smoke, so it could be really rough for Simple to actually get through this. He's gonna throw the AWP in. Oh my God, Simple, what is happening? Simple's sheer, unadulterated belligerence makes him the antithesis to device in virtually every way. They are both, in their own way, the best opera in the world, each for entirely different reasons. If we look for a device, for example, he's a player that often is only taking the smart duels and has a very strong game in terms of understanding what's safe for him and what's not safe. And he's taking every single opportunity he has to bring the advantage to his team. But when you look for other operas, for example, you look for Kenny S, you look for sometimes Simple, even sometimes myself, we are willing to take a little bit more of a risk and in the end you could be caught, caught in the process but you are challenging the other team a little bit more and it's a, it's a very different aspect and a very different way of playing. We take more risks but sometimes we kind of give it away for the opponent to a, a little bit of advantage, right? And it's because of this that people have started to juxtapose them. Simple not having it though. Yeah, comfortable is a strong word when Simple's in the server, double. And I think a triple, my goodness. Oh baby, a triple. Simple is not going down easy. In many ways, Valve's notorious nerf tore opping asunder. And as Simple and Device's opposing styles have come to show, that's a good thing. It's true that the nerf may have been unjustified, but it also made opping more interesting. In forcing oppers to rethink their craft, the nerf enabled them to inject it with new life to carry the thing that Counter-Strike loves most into what is quite possibly its most undefinable and exciting era yet. Opping is and will always be one of the few things that is the very lifeblood of esports, where something that feral, cerebral, and altogether indomitable. Simple oh. does manage the first, oh, what? and the second as well. Maybe a little bit more could come of this now. As Kadian down the ramp, Simple's gonna find everything. <gasps> Goes from here, well, that's for the next generation to decide. So your favorite opera right now is... I don't like having a favorite opera. You, because, it's you. yeah, I, I, I would just go with, I'm, the, I'm my favorite opera. Thanks for watching. If you want more great content just like this, be sure to hit the subscribe button.